Jackie was beautiful, with pretty brown eyes and a thick brown hair. She was always a lot of fun. She loved to laugh and loved to dance. She was a great dancer. We'd go to the beach. She loved to jet ski. After college, she had planned to take over her father's business, but, but now who knows? Her life will never be the same. Everyone liked Reggie. He knew how to have a good time. Reggie was definitely a jock. He had lots of friends, played a whole bunch of sports. He hadn't had that new blue SUV for very long, and you could tell he was crazy about it. Reggie's not the kind of guy you would have expected to get into trouble and end up where he did. This is where 20-year-old Jackie Savarito wanted to be. She left her family in Venezuela to come to the United States to learn to speak English. Reggie Steffi was a senior in high school. He played baseball and football. College was in his future. One of his prized possessions was the SUV he had customized. Early one Sunday morning in the fall of 1999, Jackie's and Reggie's paths crossed. In a split second, their lives would be changed forever. Just a few hours earlier, Jackie had been at a birthday party with some of her new friends. Reggie got together with friends and drank beer after work Saturday evening. Although Texas has a zero tolerance law that makes it illegal for anyone under 21 to buy or possess alcohol, later that night he went to a party and drank some more. It was late when Jackie and her friends left the birthday party. Neither she nor the driver had been drinking. Jackie rode in the front seat. About the same time, Reggie was also driving home. He was drunk. Reggie's SUV crossed the center line and hit the car Jackie was riding in head on. A fire started in the engine and spread to the inside of the car. What's the matter? I've got an emergency. I've got a car wreck. I believe it's on... Uh... Two of Jackie's friends died instantly. Jackie's legs were pinned under the dashboard. Trapped, Jackie begged for help, but rescuers could not get her out. Engulfed in flames, she screamed for 45 seconds. Then there was silence. Other than a few bruises, Reggie didn't seem to be hurt. He was taken to a hospital. He was okay. Except for one thing. A blood test showed he had been drinking. Police officers arrested him and took Reggie to jail. Jackie was barely alive when she arrived at the hospital. She was burned over most of her body. Her hair was gone. So were her nose and her ears. Her eyes were scorched, and she was almost completely blind. The fingers on both of her hands had to be amputated. The pain was indescribable and constant. She depends on her father to take care of her. Jackie spent months in the hospital. She fights every day to recover. Since the crash, she has had 50 operations, and many more will be necessary. When she can, she goes to school to improve her English. Reggie Steffi was tried and convicted for causing the deaths of two people while he was driving drunk. He is now in the state penitentiary. I went from a football field on Friday to a prison cell on Sunday. That quick. That quick through the choices I made on one, one Saturday. And so it, it can happen. I had never been in any trouble before in my life. I had never gotten any DWIs or gotten in trouble with alcohol at all. But the one time that I made that horrible decision, and the one time that I got in trouble, one time, it was devastating. And the fact that drinking and driving isn't, isn't a joke, it's not something to play around with. It's real, and these are the consequences. All of a sudden, you're in this whole new world, here you go, and you're by yourself. You're alone. 
and it's a shock. You always have a correctional officer telling you what to do and when to do it. Everywhere you go, you get strip searched and um, make sure you're not bringing anything in or taking anything out where you're not supposed to take it. The, um, the lights come on at breakfast at 2 o'clock in the morning and stay on because people come and go. Uh, lights out is at 10.30. It's definitely not like sleeping at home. It's, it's a sparse lifestyle. I probably miss the most, uh, I miss my family, my friends, the people uh, that, I've, that I've known all my life. Uh, they've always been a top priority for me and something that I've always cared very deeply about. So that is probably the hardest thing to deal with. My life before was completely different from that of today's. I was independent, 100% independent. I depended on my father financially, but I could do most things on my own, almost everything. I attended college, drove my car, occasionally went to parties, danced flamenco. In other words, a full agenda for a 20-year-old. What happens now is that I am a bit more afraid because I don't trust myself. Not because I'm a different Jackie internally. It's rather that externally I can't do what I could do before. My father is helping me to do the regular things like uh, put on my clothes or cut the food. He cares me because my vision is not very good. Right now, I don't have a specific goal. You know, I want to finish studying English. I want, you know, to keep going with my treatment. It's, it's, it's very difficult because in the past, before the accident, when all the doors were open for a regular young person, and in my case, it's harder because most of the doors are closed, no? I'm a normal person. I was a normal high school student. Anybody can come to prison, and anybody can be involved in a, a, a drinking and driving collision. It's not something that just happens to alcoholics or uh, the bad, the trouble kids. Something I have always dreamed about but never thought of fulfilling was to be a singer. But of course, there's no way I could be a singer now. Because singing nowadays requires many physical qualities, which I regrettably no longer have. Depression can, can come up real quick when you realize all the things that are going on around your family and that you're missing. One doesn't know what's worse, if to die or be left in this condition. There are times that I wonder why was I left like this? Why didn't I die? Why did I remain here? Knowing what's happened, knowing the, the, the damage that I've caused to so many people and so many families, uh, uh, it's something that I can't describe to anybody. The person that caused my, my accident destroyed my life completely. And the prison sentence is nothing compared to the life sentence that I'm going to live with knowing what I did and the consequences of what I did, the loss of life. It didn't have to happen, period. Not too long ago, I was in high school, and I was out there, I was making the same decisions that most of you were making. I was going out there on the weekends, and I'd hang out with my friends, and I'd drink. We'd drink. It was the thing to do. But you see, one of the bad decisions that I made was getting behind the wheel to go home. And you could very easily make that same decision. You might have made it before. But I want to let you know you have a choice. There are a number of things you can do. 
First of all, if, if you don't drink, you can't be impaired. But you can probably call one of your friends that hasn't been drinking. Or maybe get a designated driver in the first place so you don't have to wait till the last minute. Or you can even call your parents. And you might have to suffer a little consequence for it, but I'm sure they'd be much happier having you home alive than in a body bag or behind bars. So I can get up here and I can tell you not to drink. I can tell you not to drink and drive. But in the end, it's, the decision is going to be yours. And you have to make that choice. And so I hope you make the right decision and not the same decision that I did. My name is Jacqueline Saborido. This is a picture of me before I was hit by a drunk driver. Before the car caught fire. Before two of my friends died. Before I needed more than 40 operations. This is me when my life was just like anyone else in college. This is me after being hit by a drunk driver. Some roads take us home. Some roads take us places we've never been. Some roads and some choices take us places we would never want to go. One September night in 1999, a high school senior named Reggie Steffi took this four-lane road to get home. In high school, I was the all-American guy. Worked hard and had some hopes and dreams to keep going on the college level. But my senior year, after the third football game of the season, I was out at a party one night. I had a few beers. I was not falling down drunk and uh, weaving all over the place. But it was more than enough to impair me. It was enough to cause Reggie to cross head-on into an oncoming lane of traffic. His SUV struck a car with five people inside. Two people in the car died instantly. Two suffered broken bones, and another person was trapped inside when the car caught fire. Other than a few bruises, Reggie wasn't hurt, but a blood test showed he had been drinking. He was tried and convicted for causing the deaths of two young women while he was driving drunk. I'm 23 years old now and I've been in prison for three and a half years. There were a lot of life lessons that you learn and in prison you tend to learn them a little bit quicker. Just valuing freedom. You don't have a telephone to call your, your mom or call your best friend. You don't have email to go back and forth and, and communicate instantly. When you don't have those things, you realize how important a lot of things are to your life and how much you take them for granted. And when they're, they're gone, they're gone. 
Jacqueline Sabarito lost a lot that September night, too. She had come to Texas from her native Venezuela to improve her English. She was a passenger in the car that Reggie hit and was trapped in the burning wreckage. Somehow, she survived. Jackie lost her ears, her face, her hands, and her independence. She's had more than 50 operations. There are many more to come. Sometimes the hardest thing for me to do in my life is fight with the depression, fight when I go out. And sometimes people look at me like a, an uh, alien or, you know, something like that. The crash totally changed Jackie's life. She fights pain every day. People point at her and stare. Her plans for college and a career are on hold. And inside a Texas prison, Reggie Steffi faces a life he never expected. I hear a lot from my friends and what they're doing and where they've been and what's happening to them at college. And part of me misses that, misses what they're doing. My best friend just got married a few weeks ago. And seeing the pictures and seeing him and his bride and seeing everything that's changing and everybody else moving forward and here I'm just kind of spinning my wheels in the same place doing the same things every day and everybody else is moving forward it's kind of it's it's a hard thing to deal with sometimes you see everybody and everything changing around you and there's really nothing you can do to stop it or to move along with them my second life I could say is completely different completely of the 24 hours of the day probably I can say one or two hours I'm pretty, pretty sad about my appearance because I can say in those two hours, things that I couldn't do it with my hands or when I get so uh, warm inside my body because I, I can't sweat or when I sit uh, on, my, on the mirror, I get so sad. I can't change it. I can't make it go away. And it's not something that I want to forget about. It's some, not something that I will ever forget about. Some people would want to and some people would try, but it's something that I live with every day. If you think ahead to what you're going to be doing, you can make the right decision. But once you've been out there drinking and partying, it does impair your judgment. And you may think differently. And you may think you're all right when you're really not, like I did. Looking back on September 19th, 1999, I see, I mean, there are a number of things that I could have done to prevent this. The easiest is to not drink. Had I planned ahead and had someone sober with me, I wouldn't be in this situation. I could have called a cab and forked over 30 bucks for a cab ride home and not been in this situation. I could have called my mom or my uncle and woke them up at four o'clock in the morning and I wouldn't have been in this situation. Two people would be alive, and Jacqueline would be about her life. And the easiest way to prevent that is decide who's driving tonight before you go to the party. Reggie Steffi has been turned down for parole. He is scheduled to be released from prison in 2008 after spending 2,555 days behind bars. Jackie will spend the rest of her life recovering from injuries. She continues to speak out against the dangers of drinking and driving.
continually reliving it. Since the crash happened, everything changed. It has been more than 10 years since a drunk driving crash turned their lives upside down. Reggie Steffi landed in the state penitentiary for intoxication manslaughter. He was 20 years old. Jackie Sabarito lost her looks, her independence, and her hopes for a bright future. Some mistakes last forever. Twenty years old when I was sentenced to prison, and I was twenty-seven years old when I got out. It's not what you see on TV, um, but it's it's not a place anybody wants to go. I would have much rather gone to college, out of high school, than gone to prison. Basically, I'm at a 10-year um, setback in terms of all of the stages of life that one usually goes through. You can let it get you down and quit, or just keep taking one step at a time. It's, uh, it'll still be a long road. The accident will always be a part of my life. Uh, it's not something I could change, um, but it's also not something I'm able to describe to anybody else. Uh, it's not something that'll ever go away. It can be forgiven, but it can't be forgotten. It's made a lot of people aware of the dangers of drinking and driving, how serious one night can be. It's all it takes. If anything that I've gone through can uh, have an effect on, on the decisions that somebody chooses to make, um, I just hope that it has. I just hope that it has. Uh, I think the crash changed everything. I couldn't continue my career. I couldn't continue uh, dancing. And, uh, I cannot go to the beach like I did it before. Uh, I don't hang out like before with friends. I need more time than uh, a normal person needs. I need special conditions, sometimes that I don't like, but this is the reality. So almost 10 years uh, after the accident, um, uh, I see better. I can do things better with, with my f with my hands. Um, but I have to take care of my skin. Um, I, I still have low vision, and I think uh, I'll, I never will have what I want to have or what I have before. Right now, and a little bit pessimistic and, and confused. So I'm 30, so I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. It has been so hard all of this time. And right now I'm trying to, to concentrate, to accept what happened. And my life is going to be like this, so I don't know. It has, it has, been, it has been so difficult. I faced my depression 
with the support of my father, my family, my friends. Before the accident, I used to be independent and self-sufficient, and now I, I need I need to to ask for help. If I have a wish, I would like to to have a, a normal body, to not be disabled, to have vision, to have my hands back, my normal skin, my regular appearance. Um, to to have a, a normal life.